Hey, this is Russ. Time for a health update. <laughs> what, you don't recognize me? <laughs> Check this out. <laughs> yeah, what kind of thing is this? <laughs> Plastic lens and looks like some type of cardboard uh, frames. <laughs> yeah, I just came back from the ophthalmologist. I was gonna say optometrist, ophthalmologist, yeah. Yeah, they dilated my eyes. So if I look like a little hazy to you, if I, my eyes look not normal to you, that's the reason. Yeah, eyes are totally dilated. Yeah, I have a very shallow depth of field going on right now <laughs> for those who, of you who are into photography. Um, yeah, let me tell you uh, what's going on with myself here. Yeah, these, uh, once they dilate your eyes, I'm sure a lot of you guys have had dilated eyes before to give you these temporary sunglasses so that you don't get burned in by the, uh, by the sun when you go out and drive. <laughs> I'll put them down here. So how's my health doing? Well, it's been another week now, so it's time to give you an update. Mondays we do health updates on me and other topics as it comes along. And then on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, we will do e-bike uh, e videos, right? Yeah, everything looks fuzzy. Yeah, I, don't, I don't feel regular. You know, I'm looking at the uh, at the uh, camera, which is my iPhone, <laughs> and yeah, it's out of focus. I could still see some stuff from a distance, though. So let's talk about my eyes first, okay, since that's the thing that started us out here. So I went to see the ophthalmologist because my vision was changed from the diabetes, and um, yeah, it's kind of strange because, you know, I was saying in my videos before that uh, my, my far distance vision seems like pretty decent. In fact, it, it, I can see better without my glasses, but the near field wasn't so good, you know, with or without the glasses, I was kind of out of focus. So I ended up buying, uh, some readers, 1.5 times, uh, magnification readers, which I ended up returning because my eyes continually changes. And I had already outgrown that 1.5 times reader. It wasn't even a week. I had to return it. So anyway, um, so I went to see the ophthalmologist because that's typically what you should do. I, I noticed in my left eye, there was a little like half moon white little thing in my left eye. It's been there for years, okay? And then uh, the right eye, I'm sorry, my right eye has that. My left eye <laughs> had a little bit of clouding. Um, you can kind of see a little clouding thing around my eye. So uh, some of you guys thought maybe that could be, you know, you might have cataracts problem or glaucoma or something like that. Yeah, it's neither one of those things, okay? turns out that that little white thing on the right eye is a scar. Yeah, they asked me if I had ever worn contacts. I said, yeah, back in the day. So they said, you probably, probably scratch your eyes at that time, and it's just a scar. So they said, if you don't like to see that, we could remove it, but that's surgery, of course. And they said, but if it doesn't bother you, you don't see anything, it's not growing anymore, he says, just leave it. I said, well, what about the left eye? She goes, that's age. <laughs> they said, everybody gets that. So eventually you will get that as you get older. So they said, don't worry about it. It's nothing to concern yourself with. So I asked them, how's the overall health of my eyes? It says, actually, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, just, it's just that your vision has changed a little bit because of the diabetes. They look through the eye and there's, there's no diabetes issues in the back of the eye or anything like that. They says, it'll probably go back to the way it is once your blood sugars are back in check. All right. Now, they were going to do a um, prescription for me, but then as we talked about it, I said, well, I'm not going to get it filled anyways, because if it continually changes, why fill the prescription? So why do I need the prescription? And they, they agreed. They said, yeah, let's not do it. They wanted a follow-up visit in a year, but I'm thinking, <laughs> if nothing changes in a year, I'm not coming back either. <laughs> I mean, I don't normally go see an ophthalmologist. I only did that to check to see if my eyes are okay. I may still do it after all the diabetes things become more uh, normalized and and uh, just to make sure I'm still okay. But they said, you probably don't need to come back for at least a year. So whatever. And Jay said, if you want to come back for a new prescription, you can do that. But I usually just go to Costco. The Costco uh, optometrist can do that. So yeah. I'll do it there. <laughs> Anyway, so at least we know my eye and my vision is okay. It's normal for this to happen, and it'll probably go back. The doctor said the same thing, and so did the ophthalmologist, who's also a doctor, technically, right? So nothing to worry about. It's normal because of diabetes. It'll probably go back to normal. Good. Good to hear, all right? 
Yeah. Um, and what else? Uh, blood pressure. Let's see. My blood pressure this week has gone uh, down as low as something like, I think it was like 122 or something like that, over 78 or something. That's pretty good. But it, it was like one time. Okay. It typically hovers around the 140 to maybe up to even as much as 145 uh, over, I would say, 75 through 82, somewhere in between there. So let's just average it out. We'll just kind of say 140 over 80. That seems to be where I'm at at this point. So uh, as you know that the uh, blood pressure medication uh, Losartan was increased from 25 milligrams to 50 milligrams. So, um, so anyway, um, it, it took a little while for me to get that medication uh, from Walgreens because um, they just needed the approval. And uh, interestingly, that medication um, isn't that expensive overall. I think... Um, the, the three three months supply was uh, sixteen dollars in copay, so it wasn't so bad. So they put in a uh, request for my metformin, which is the medication I use for the diabetes. I'll give you my blood sugars in a second, and uh, I'm still waiting from Walgreens to fulfill that. <laughs> All right. So apparently the insurance company turned it down because they you know they took my my medication, uh, which is um, metformin. And they, they went from 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams, right? Well, um, apparently they, they must not make um, 1,000 milligram pills. So you have to take two 500s. So a 90-day supply basically means 180 pills. <laughs> so I went, when I went to pick up my, uh, I picked up some other additional medication, which was, uh, I, I don't even remember, something starts with an A, ends with statin or something for... Um, uh, high cholesterol. My cholesterol is really not that high, but the, I guess the L, is it the LDL, the bad cholesterol, was slightly higher than it should be, and so uh, the um, endocrinologist says I'm going to give it to you, but we're going to give you the lowest dosage, which is like 10 milligrams. So it's a very small little pill. So I went to pick that up, and they, Walgreens had that available. Uh, but when I went to pick it up, uh, the the uh, pharmacy tech. Uh, pulled out the metformin and then she goes oh wait a minute so she goes back into the back and then she pulls out the the uh, um, the uh, um, uh, cholesterol medication she says this is the one you need I says well what about the one that you just pulled out she goes we're waiting for insurance so the whole thing is insurance probably sees this and say why does he have like 180 pills <laughs> uh, they they apparently don't realize that um you know, I, I need a 90-day supply. You have to take two pills instead of one. So it looks like a lot of pills, right? It almost looks like six months of supply. But in reality, I'm taking two of them, so it's really only three months of supply. So we're waiting. Now, apparently it takes at least three more days before they can re reapply to the insurance company to try to get this paid. But I did see the bill. If you don't get it paid, that 180 pills would have been... I think it was something like $110 out of pocket. So it's not a very expensive medication, <laughs> right? But even so, the insurance doesn't want to pay the 110 until they for sure know what it is. So I'm waiting still for um, that medication. Even though they are, they'd already filled it, it's sitting in a, in a bottle waiting for me, the insurance has to deal with it. <laughs> Story of my life. So anyway... <laughs> So what are my numbers for, for uh, my, my uh, blood sugars? Okay, so this is the uh, glucose test, right? So uh, I got as low as 97, I believe it was, which is in the normal ranges now, okay? Uh, but it seems to be hovering around realistically about 100 and I would say anywhere between 105 to 117, 120, something like that which is a little bit higher than normal, but a lot better than when I started, which was around the 254, I think, something like that. So now here's an interesting thing. Okay, I, we, we talked about the ophthalmologist. I also went to see an endocrinologist, and um, she's, uh, she's an Indian lady. I have a lot of Indian people dealing with me. <laughs> my first doctor, my, my former um, uh, primary care doctor was an Indian guy, but he went private, and so now I have a new guy. He's Chinese, <laughs> all right? But the uh, diabetic educator she's indian the endocrinologist is also indian 
<laughs> so anyway, she she says to me, she says, "Well, your number um, shows that you were at thirteen point three." She says, "If you were ticked up a li- little higher, maybe I don't know what she considered a little higher, fourteen. She says, if you were just a hot bit higher, she says you wouldn't be seeing me in the um, in the office. I'd be seeing you in the hospital. That's how bad it was." <laughs> So she says you were on the edge of where they would have hospitalized you. Wow, that's pretty bad, huh? So thank you to you guys for figuring out that it was diabetes. Because <laughs> that's what got me started to start investigating it. And then we, of course, found out it is diabetes, right? So yeah, I didn't know the symptoms of diabetes. So let me, let me repeat it for you guys who are not diabetic, but maybe you're heading there and don't know it, all right? Here's what happened to me. Um, extreme thirst i mean uh, really thirsty dry mouth i'm talking it's so dry i actually grabbed my tongue to feel my tongue to see what it felt like sandpaper it was dried out it felt like a sandpaper (laughs) i'm not kidding you get dry mouth you drink a lot of water and every 20 to 30 minutes you're running to the washroom to pee it out you're peeing out the sugars essentially so um and then um unexplained weight loss So we lost like 10 pounds and uh, didn't know how I lost all this weight, right? I thought I was doing good. (laughs) Well, it was the diabetes doing it to you. So if you have any of those things, go check your doctor, find out if you have diabetes or not. Okay, it's worth it for you to check it. So you you need to have them do a blood test and then they will check your A1C levels. And uh, you need to be, I don't know what the numbers are. I I keep forgetting to look it up. It's like 5 point something, 5.4, 5.6. I don't know what it is. In that general ranges, okay, if you're over 7, you're definitely diabetic. And if anywhere between the 5 point, whatever it was, to 7, you're considered like pre-diabetic. Go check your levels out. I was 13.3, all right? <laughs> so that's my glucose. That's my blood sugars. Uh, that's that's my, my uh, blood pressure as well. So overall, the drugs are definitely working, all right? I do still take the uh, little finger prick test. I'll have to show it to you guys. I keep saying that and I never do it. So <laughs> if I remember, maybe I'll put an insert of, of uh, me doing it. I don't know. Whatever. If not, it'll be next week. Okay. Now, they also gave me a blood monitor thing. It's, it's on my arm right in the back, right down here by my arm. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, let me see if I can show it to you. Can, can you guys see this? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> you know what it looks like? It looks like an Apple ear tag. <laughs> Yeah, it's got a little needle, okay, and then they push it up again. And you don't even feel it when it goes in. I don't feel it now. So it's basically monitoring my blood glucose, and they're going to do it for two weeks. So I go back to the diabetic educator. She's the one that's going to take the readings. Unfortunately, this one doesn't send it to my iPhone where I can actually see my constant measurement. That would be a better monitor. Maybe it costs more money and they don't do it, but I would have loved to have had that. Then I can see it, right? Anyway, she's going to take all the, the, the data off of it. I think she said it checks it like every 15 minutes. So it's going to plot a curve of how my blood sugars are per week. I got to do it for one week and then go back a second week. So she's going to take the data off of that. I, I'm curious to see what it shows. I mean, I, I have a gut feeling where it's at because I do a, uh, a blood, sh- uh, blood sugar check of myself, the glucose test myself with the finger prick test. I do it early in the morning when I wake up, and then I do it just before I have dinner. So, um, but this will chart it out for the day. You'll see how your blood sugar spikes or goes down and, and whatever. So, yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to see that. I won't go back to see her until uh, Thursday and then the following Thursday as well. So that's the info I have for you so far. <laughs> All right. So uh, overall, I'm doing pretty good. I feel okay. I still have good energy level. I was able to go out and ride my bike twice this week because our weather has gotten pretty decent, but it's it's short-lived. If we hit, I think I was out when it was like 49 or something like that, and then 54 degrees. Then it's dropping again back into the 30s, so we won't be able to go back out again on that e-bike. But it was good to get out, and I felt uh, just as energetic to to ride, and I was I was pedaling some and then not pedaling others, and I pedaled on the way back. So I am doing that. I am still doing also the the exercises on the uh, recumbent uh, exercise bike from Schwinn. So um, I'm still doing that. So overall, I I would say I'm doing pretty well. Uh, The endocrinologist said that she was surprised how quickly uh, I reacted with the the medication. She says it's surprising how low your blood sugars and, and your blood pressure has already dropped within, you know, the short time that you've been taking the medication. 
So overall, she says you're doing really good. <laughs> uh, it's just that everything has to stabilize. And, and then, of course, I did ask her, will I be able to get off of these drugs in time? She says, you very well could. Yeah, she says it's not impossible. But she says, considering how well you're doing now, is you very well could. She says, the whole thing is you got to change the, the lifestyle, how you eat. She was very happy to hear that all I, all I eat is salads <laughs> and some chicken. Um, I have been taking a little bit of uh, carbs. I, I do take uh, two pieces of bread. Um, I've been doing that daily now, two pieces of bread. I, I just did like a, like a tuna salad type of thing, which is just basically tuna and mayo. And, and, then, uh, and then I put it on the bread. So um, that's the only carbs I've been taking at this point. Everything else has been just salads. And the salads consist of uh, romaine lettuce. Um, what else? <laughs> uh, about a, at least one piece of chicken, whether it's a chicken leg or chicken thigh, something like that. And then um, a hard-boiled egg and um, a little bit of cheese. So I have um, uh, shredded mozzarella cheese in there. I sprinkle on a little bit of Parmesan cheese as well. And then the salad dressing is still the uh, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil with uh, uh, apple cider vinegar. Um, so it's a three to one ratio, three, three, uh, uh, three uh, of the oil and one of the apple cider vinegar. And then I also squeeze in a little bit of spicy brown mustard uh, and then put in very little bit of salt. And then I put some pepper in there as well and, and one teaspoon of um, sugar. And that that will make about an eight ounce amount of uh, the salad dressing. So I put one teaspoon of sugar for the eight ounces of it. It's not so bad, you know. You spread that out over you know several times uh, because I get lots of meals out of the eight ounces. Um, that's very little sugar over that amount of uh, amount of meals. So it's not so bad. Okay. Other than that, that's about all I've been eating. Um, I I do eat some nuts. Like I said, I have. Um, uh, very little amount of peanuts, and, and then I also have like uh, almonds as well. So it's, it's very little. So just a few pieces there, a few pieces there. They say, I, I just read something that the almonds and the peanuts aren't so bad for, for diabetes, and it kind of could help as well. So I take a few of those. And that's it, and just water. So sometimes I'll have sparkling water, you know, flavored sparkling water, which is essentially water. <laughs> <laughs> it's carbonated water is basically all it is so yeah i'm doing okay i i don't um i don't really get hungry during that time i don't really snack or anything like that um except for the peanuts you know but again it's a very small amount of it and, and it's only done like once or twice during the day so small amount we're talking peanuts maybe 10 peanuts at a time <laughs> maybe 20 at the most uh through the day if, if even that maybe 15 even Almonds, the, these almonds we have were already like pre-chopped up, so I don't know how many almond pieces that would be. So let's say, let's say 10 almonds, <laughs> something like that. That's about it. That's, that's all I do for the whole day. So I need to introduce other foods. I know that, but uh, I'm okay doing this so far. So, oh, weight loss. How did we do for weight loss? Um, last week I reported I was down to 248. I'm down to 247. <laughs> so that's still 21 pounds of weight loss. So nothing got lost this week. And uh, I know the calorie intake is a lot lower than I had done in the past, but I, I know how weight loss works because it's like this each time I went on those 50-pound diets. You lose a bunch of weight, let's say anywhere between 8 to 10 pounds, and then you'll plateau and it'll just sit there, all right? It could be a week or two with nothing happening, and then it'll start dropping again. This, this has happened many times for me in the past, so I'm not surprised there's no weight loss this week. But uh, there's no weight gain, let's say that. <laughs> so that's good, right? So anyways, that's all I have to tell you guys for this week. Um, the main thing was the, the seeing the two doctors, seeing if, uh, if I was okay and doing well. And, and both said I'm on par of where I should be. And at least I know that the eyes are not messed up. Uh, you know, like I said, in this right eye, um, there's this little like half moon white thing. And it's been there for years. And they said, that's, that's just a, a scarring probably from contacts that you wore in the past. I mean, when they first gave me contacts, I mean, I, w I was in the 20s at that point, and they had hard contacts. I bet you I scratched it then. Then eventually I switched over to soft contacts and then disposable contacts. 
I eventually end up going back to glasses. Um, I went to contacts uh, simply because back in the days when I was working in the forensic world and I was going to crime scenes, I'm taking photos with, uh, you know, for the, of the crimes and everything with the, with the glasses on and looking through the camera viewfinder, it was tougher. So I says, if I go to contacts, I'll be able to see through the viewfinder better, uh, get better compositions, be able to focus up quickly, that type of thing. So I went to contacts. Eventually, contacts started getting expensive, and, and I said, well, what a hassle. I have to put it on, clean them, and all that stuff. So I ended up going back to glasses, and ever since then, I've been with my glasses. So um, will I go back to contacts? I don't think so. Um, I haven't had it in so many years. I mean, we're talking... 30 plus years, right? Uh, I, I won't go back. So I will be get back with my glasses once my eyes are back. Oh, and by the way, one more thing. <laughs> There's always one more thing. I keep forgetting. So the ophthalmologist says at this point, your distance viewing and like is kind of like if you were wearing your glasses. I said that exactly. I says, I feel like, I feel like the prescription with the glasses. And then if I take it off with my problems right now, I see as well as if I, if I had my glasses on. She goes, yeah, that's that's common, and and the near field is not as good, but it's getting better. Uh, I, I now notice that I can actually see things close up again, but not very good. She said that the left eye is a little bit better than the right eye, but she says, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you'll probably be able to see without your glasses for a while. So in a sense, it's almost like the eye got better, but it's gonna go back. <laughs> so so I asked her. I says, okay. What about driving? I have a restriction of glasses. How do I get around if I if I wear my glasses? It's worse. It's like a double prescription. It's like it's almost like putting on glasses when you don't need it. What do I do then? What do I tell a uh, What do I tell a cop if he call, pulls me over for for a traffic violation? She goes, I don't know. She says, uh, keep the glasses in your in your car. <laughs> tell them what's going on. I mean, she says she said my vision right now is good enough that if I probably went to the the DMV and took a, a vision test, they would probably take off the, um, the uh, eyeglass restriction because you'll probably pass the vision test just with, uh, with your, your eyes the way they are now. So that, that's why I'm saying that, you know, sometimes I was saying I was, I was riding my e-bike and uh, I didn't need the glasses. It's true. She says, you, you would probably pass. <laughs> that's how good the vision is right now, but it's going to shift, okay? So it's very strange that you think, oh, my, my eyes is messed up. Actually, my eyes got better, <laughs> if you think about it. It got better for the far distance, but that's going to change again. It's going gonna, it's gonna to switch back. So more than likely, I'm thinking by the time it finally stabilizes back, the prescription for the existing glasses will probably be not right. Probably has to be changed a little bit. So yeah, I just got new glasses and sunglasses like a year ago. So who knows? I, I wanted to stabilize totally before I need to, you know, change any type of prescription. So that's it. Okay, enough. <laughs> I have so much stuff to tell you guys. Anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already done so, watch on Mondays for my health updates or anything else I need to tell you guys. Watch on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for e-bike videos. I'll talk to you guys next time.